But first, let me introduce our next uh, speaker. Crico is an important leader in the economic development of Northern Quebec. Thanks to its numerous subsidiaries, such as Air Quebec, Crico de Mas, Creek Construction Gestion ADC, Quality Inn and Suites Valdor and Val Piro. Today we asked its uh, today we asked its president, Mr. Derek Neposh, uh, to tell us about Crico's background and how the company has succeeded in positioning itself as a leader in northern logistics. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you Mr. Derek Neposh, president of Crico. Let's give him a round of applause, everybody. Joshua is uh, taller than I thought. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, here this afternoon and uh, to present to you what we at Creco uh, do. Uh, I'm quite challenged right now because of time, so we're, the topic is right on, so it's going to be a logistical challenge for me to go through my... Uh, what I thought was a 40 minute presentation, but it's now down to 20 minutes, so. <laughs> but I can do it, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that uh, uh, our slides are working, yeah. Yeah, so once again, uh, thank you uh, and welcome uh, Mayors uh, Destu, Brindamore, and Dallaire, uh, Dr. Ted Moses, and uh, the wonderful staff at the Secretariat. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's always a, a pleasure to contribute to such events and to share our story, uh, what we do at Creco. Um, Chantal, thanks once again for your wonderful years of service. Uh, it's always been a, a pleasure to work with you and uh, to, to see you at our events. It's not over, no, it's the journey, it's your new journey that begins, right? <laughs> yeah, so um, Creco, uh, you know, we, like uh, as Joshua's introduction goes, you know, uh, we're, we, we have a very diverse set of uh, subsidiaries under Creco. And as a parent company, you know, we've always uh, looked at the challenge of not micromanaging our companies. So our companies involve uh, a lot of complex issues and there's, uh, you know, there's, there's multiple layers of management as well that we that we respect and we trust every one of our managers to to make these decisions you know to ensure that there's continuity in the in the business but also growth and expansion for for our companies so when we talk about northern logistics you know according to uh, Marion Webster and Oxford dictionary it defines it as a detailed coordination of a complex operation involving many people, facilities, or supplies. It involves organizing, planning, management, and a whole series of other um, factors that bring together what you wish to achieve in terms of delivering goods or services to certain communities. And it gets a little bit more complex when you think about uh, you know, because of the isolation factor that we have and, uh, and the network that we use and depend, depend on, you know, the road network and the, uh, and the airline services that we have uh, for cargo, uh, you know, this becomes uh, a real holistic view in terms of what we can achieve, you know, with the limited resources that we have. So bringing us to how Creco uh, is involved in, in these uh, different industries. You know, the delivery of goods and services and, and so forth uh, has always been a challenge for every one of our companies. And I'll share a bit of a, each of the challenges. Uh, on the slides, you'll see a, a definition of what the companies do and, and, and how we operate. We would also, uh, you know, we, we also depend on partners and suppliers, and we want to make sure that the goods and services that we deliver are at an optimal level, uh, you know, for the benefit of our people, but also we take into consideration the competitive markets that exist in terms of uh, 
ensuring that these products and services are delivered to, to our communities in the north. Maybe just a brief, brief background uh, in terms of what uh, where Creco comes from. Section 2505 of the uh, James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement states that the Board of Compensation has the power to create one or more wholly owned holding or venture capital uh, corporations. So when you look at the, 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 the model of Creco, you know, we're, we're very diverse in terms of the industries that we, that we work in. In 1982, the uh, Board of Compensation invested in creating Creco, and Creco would become a, a, a wholly owned investment uh, holding company for the Cree. Several businesses were created one by one, and this was all based on the needs of the people uh, in terms of creating employment, but also opportunities in different areas where we could participate in the development of our region. Just a, a slide on the structure. Uh, like I mentioned, Creco was, uh, was incorporated in 1982. And beneath that, we have uh, our uh, six major companies. We have Creek Construction, we have Air Quebec, Valpiro, Zestion ADC, EU Inu Realty Properties, and the uh, Quality Inn in Valdor. Throughout uh, these years, we've also established uh, part, uh, partnerships with the communities. So Chisasibi, East Main, Nemska, uh, you know, we have partnerships under uh, Creek Construction. And uh, we're also very proud of our partnership and ownership of uh, Prop Air. Recently, uh, a couple of years back, we bought 50% of uh, Prop Air, which does uh, medevac uh, services. Um, and then under ADC, we have uh, community partnerships with uh, Ms. Disney, uh, namely Mr. Sidney Swallow, and then uh, Waswanapi, it's with uh, Muka Corporation and NDC uh, with uh, Nemska. So as you can see the structure, you know, it, it, it shows and demonstrates that we're willing and ready to work with the communities in terms of looking at these opportunities and making sure that we can maintain the work within our communities and, and for the benefit of our people. A bit of history uh, and some of the values that we hold dearly is that Creco and its subsidiaries was always created, uh, was created and built on the, on the on the foundation that we wanted to make sure that we provide the goods and services that meet the needs of our people in a very isolated uh, part of uh, the province of Quebec. And one of our primary objectives uh, as a result of that was, you know, when we create, when, when our leaders back then created Creco, you know, the, the, there, was, there must have been a bigger challenge just to say that, you know, we want an airline, we want a construction company. You know, there, there must have been so much thought and pr uh, preparation in terms of how we want to advance those, those types of services to our, to our people. Not only for the benefit of our people, but also generating partnerships, you know, for the southern uh, regions such as Rouen, Valdor, Shibugmu, uh, Kevion, you know, so there's, there's many uh, municipalities that we uh, depend on as well. And uh, when you look at the, uh, the subsidiaries and the impact it has had on the North, especially within the Cree Nation, you know, it's been a, a fundamental pillar, you know, of our company to say that, you know, we're, we are taking matters into our own hands and that we're, we're ready for expansion and growth. And throughout this time, uh, you know, we've created a lot of jobs and, uh, you know, and that results into nation building as well. You know, we're not only creating jobs, but we're also building a future for future generations. And this allows us to make a difference uh, for our population, but also expand our knowledge in different areas of business. So like I mentioned, uh, I'll just go through the, I'm not gonna read every slide here, I'm sure you know what Air Quebec does. Uh, and some of the challenges, I think, is what I wanna share with you today in terms of when we talk about Northern logistics, okay, for example, Air Quebec, it's a very complex subsidiary due to, uh, due to it being very highly regulated by, by federal and provincial laws, uh, you know, and, and the transportation of passengers and cargo uh, all comes with challenges. You know, recently we just heard 
from the previous panel that the, you know, the forest fires will always be a lesson learned, you know, and it wasn't a failure. And, and as a company, Air Quebec was there, ready and willing to work at, at, a, at a short notice. And, we, we, and we're very proud of the fact that we were part of these evacuation plans as well, you know, and I think that demonstrates our capability in, in addressing, um, you know, immediate needs of our people, especially when it comes to emergencies. And this is not only within EUHG, but also we had to do these types of services and evacuations for the Ontario side of James Bay. So I think, you know, when, when, when I talk about logistics, planning and being prepared, I think it's very key in terms of uh, addressing these types of challenges. And they're not only going to come once, you know, to, so we better be prepared, God forbid, you know, for, for another, um, you know, state of emergency, you know, whenever, it, whenever that's called, you know, I think we're, we're ready for that, uh, for that call. And we rely on the communities, uh, you know, we rely on, on good communication, like the Chief Shannon had mentioned before, you know, communication was very key in terms of putting a plan into place, but implementing that plan was also just as challenging for us as well uh, in the airline. The other part of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, Air Quebec's uh, services is the charter services. We offer uh, uh, mines chartered uh, flights. You know, we bring their teams in and out of uh, the mine sites. Uh, we also offer cargo services to remote communities. Uh, we also ensure that the communities can continue to function, you know, based on what they depend on as products from the south. And another very important factor as part of the transportation, aviation transportation, is the medevac uh, charters that we offer for uh, health uh, healthcare purposes. And uh, like I mentioned, you know, we have 50% of uh, ownership of Prop Air, and that's uh, a partnership that's been there for a number of years, and we're very proud of the fact that, you know, we've advanced that partnership to a level where we're very, uh, uh, you know, we have a very reputable name uh, in terms of providing that type of service. Um, Air Quebec celebrated 40 years of operations in 2022. You know, it has three flight base operations, and these are very key uh, to know, you know, when, especially when we're talking about emergencies or different types of services. So we have uh, bases in Val d'Or, Timmins, and Montreal, uh, more, more specifically in Dorval. And then, uh, you know, the company has grown to a fleet of 17 aircraft. We have 14-8s, we have 2-8-300s, and uh, we still have one uh, hawker that's, uh, that's going to be retired very soon. So we've had museums uh, call us, you know, to retire uh, a hawker. He's not just putting a vehicle on the side of the road, you know. So it's, there's a lot more to that. So we've been getting a lot of interesting calls, you know, for, for, uh, you know, for the Hawker because it's a, it was an aircraft that's uh, that provided uh, such important uh, services for different uh, communities. For Creek Construction, um, you know, some of the challenges that we faced uh, in terms of logistics is the delivery of material has always been a, a challenging factor. You know, we, we all hear the, the amount of uh, transportation trucks going up and down the Billy Diamond Highway. Uh, you know, it takes time and it costs a lot of money, you know, to transport material using one source. So we're trying to be creative in terms of what other sources we could use. And then we, we think about barging material, you know, all the way around Quebec uh, by, by ship. So there's, there's opportunity there too when you look at, you know, uh, the, the services that are, that are being, that the Inuit communities are, are so dependent on, you know. Uh, so we, we piggyback on that and, uh, you know, it is a challenge. Um, Creek Construction as a general contractor uh, is the definition of logistics is, is a matter of bringing all components together, you know, for example, a school doesn't just have beams and boards and lumber and windows. There's so many other things that need to be delivered. When you look at the size of this room, you know, just try to think about something 20, 30 times the size of this room. 
uh, is one project for reconstruction. And imagine the, uh, lo the logistics. So there's a huge opportunity in terms of transporting these types of uh, materials you know, to northern communities. And earlier this morning, we also uh, heard about the, uh, the Grand Alliance, you know, for the, uh, uh, the railway system. You know, that would be an added plus for, for Creek Instruction to get materials to the northern communities. We're not endorsing the project. We're not uh, forcing it on anyone. We're just saying that, you know, it is an idea, you know. So for the, with every business, you know, comes an idea, right? So when you look at Creek Instruction as well, you know, there's, there's also other types of material that are required on different work sites. You know, there's civil work that needs to be done. So we're talking about large industrial equipment that needs to be delivered to, to the communities. And, um, you know, and I think there's, there's a strong reliance in terms of depending on the relationship that we have with the, with the EBITB region, you know, because there is more material here available than there is in my community of Oswanapi, for example. So, you know, there's, so there's always that dependence on, uh, on material. And partnering with the regions, I think, is, is very key and very instrumental in making sure that our projects in the north are successful and that are done on budget and on schedule. And then becomes the transportation costs. Okay, and these, uh, uh, you know, these, these could be factors that could be looked at negatively, but we, we try to put a positive spin on it and promote that industry to say there is opportunity for transportation. You know, there's, uh, I, at one time I recalled Cree School Board training uh, truck drivers, you know, and uh, a lot of these truck drivers don't become entrepreneurs, they become employees of a, a trucking company, which is okay. But I think, you know, when we look at the, the small and medium businesses that are created within the communities, these are the backbone of our economy. And I think this is where we need to stimulate that, uh, that economy within our communities. Uh, I can skip over the, the last slide there. Uh, we'll go into ADC. ADC is our janitorial and catering company, uh, and we serve a diverse uh, uh, clientele uh, from, you know, we, we have 12 remote uh, mining and hydro Quebec sites. So you can imagine that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Cisco Mine, for example, the lady I was up here, uh, mentioned that, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, 80 kilometers uh, away from the community and 100 kilometers from the Belt Cavillon on a gravel road. So and then we have the delivery of food. We have Mr. Patrick DeHay here in the room. He probably knows the logistics of bringing that food to these, you know, to that, to that mine site. It involves a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, and it also involves a lot of uh, uh, management in terms of, you know, when you deliver uh, frozen food, fruits, vegetables, you know, so just the, uh, the minor details of all that is, is so key. And we want to make sure that we can deliver the best products for, for our clients, like the mines, Hydro Quebec, uh, and making sure that, uh, you know, that we're in line with what we promise to do as a company when it comes to the delivery of uh, food and uh, cleaning products, uh, you know, and we also manage a, a labor workforce, you know, that is, we have to look at it at a very high level to make sure that this is consistent, you know, that, and, it's, and that we don't have any disruptions that could cause harm to the operations of any remote work site. So when you look at the, uh, the supply chain of uh, food, uh, you know, we have, there's, there's so many factors to look at in terms of, you know, how long does it take to deliver you know, a truckload of food to, let's say, Cisco. And then you compare that to all the, mine, uh, all the hydro camps up north, which are way further. You know, so there's a lot of logistics involved in that too. So warehousing becomes an opportunity. See, so there's other opportunities that, that come into play when we look at the size of the operations that we, uh, that we cover. Uh, maybe just a few statistics on uh, Gestion ADC. We have 414 employees across all these locations. 23% of them are Indigenous employees. And 56% uh, of them, 56% uh, of these employees are within the mining sector. 
Then we go to Valpiro. Valpiro is a ground handling and cargo company based in Valdor, which was purchased by Creco in 1988. Valpiro has uh, two main operating locations, Lagrand and Valdor. Uh, it has 38 employees, and this company has, a won, uh, has won awards for their customer satisfaction. Having awards is, is, is a positive aspect in terms of demonstrating what you can do as a company. And satisfying your customers' needs is also secondary in terms of you know, what, what you're capable of doing. So Valpiro offers the, uh, you know, the, the, the services of uh, ground handling. So that's uh, the fueling and de-icing of planes. So they do that uh, you know, on a very regular basis and even take on these smaller contracts just to assist other partners uh, you know, within, within those two airports. Like Air Inuit is a very important client of ours. So we, we try to make sure that we could uh, maintain a high level of satisfaction with our, with our clients. And uh, you know, some of the challenges I think Valpiro has faced in the past couple of years were related to making sure that these uh, products are delivered to the individuals. You know, we just came out of a pandemic, sorry I have to say the word, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was very challenging. You know, the, the, the amount of cargo that was coming in and uh, you know, into our communities was was uh, you know was a was a big change for us. You know, in terms of how we handle it, how we organize ourselves as a company. But we're very glad that uh, you know we overcame that uh, very successfully. Then we go into uh, quality in. Uh, as many of you know, this started out as a 50% uh, 50 50 partnership with uh, Trahan Holdings back in 2011. Uh, in 2020, we became 100% owned by Creco. Uh, the hotel has 82 rooms and suites, and it is the only hotel that can accommodate six people per room. So, uh, you know, we adjusted that. So when you look at logistics again, you know, there's, you know, families that travel in, in, in bigger groups, and we looked at that as an opportunity rather than a challenge. So that's one important factor there when it comes to logistics, you know, is adjusting to what your clients need. We announced the, uh, the renovations uh, back at the, uh, the conference uh, about a year ago, and we're proud to announce that the renovations have been completed. Uh, and now we are planning on a 42-room extension. Uh, this is the announcement I made again last, uh, last year. And, uh, you know, and we're also proud to to have won another award, you know, for the hotel, for the, you know, we've got another uh, platinum award this year, so which is being recognized as one of the top uh, hotels uh, under the, the banner of uh, Choice Hotels. So we're very proud of the hotel itself, and uh, and I think when you look at the hotel itself too, you know, it's a very strategic location where business uh, travelers come in from the north, so it serves as a hub for people to to make their halfway stop. Okay, some people would say Metagmi is our halfway stop because they're probably from Chesapeake. But if you're from East Maine, Valdor is your halfway stop. So, you know, you have to play with that a bit. But, uh, you know, we're very proud of the hotel and I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going well and the expansion of the hotel is scheduled for 2025. EU Inu Realty Properties, uh, you know, this company was created in 2011. It's a real estate company. Uh, based out of uh, Montreal, but our head offices are in Ojebugmu. Uh, what was formerly known as the 277 Duke Street, you'll see a picture of it here. This is a recent picture. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it was a, a previous office of uh, the Cree Nation government, the Cree School Board, and the Cree Health Board. But uh, we tore down the old building and uh, uh, constructed what you see on the screen here is a, is a tower of a mix of apartments and condos, uh, 429 apartments and condos. Uh, and it's being completed as we speak. Uh, the first move-ins have already moved in uh, two weeks ago. And I think the, uh, uh, the full opening, the full completion will be done in August of this summer. Some of the key challenges that we face as a, as a holding company is uh, diversifying our activities 
and relying on our clients as well on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, because it's very important to maintain that that relationship, you know, in a, in a very open way, but also uh, learning from each other is something that we always uh, uh, want to ensure that, you know, we learn from them and they learn from us. Uh, reducing turnover has also been a very key challenge. So we're, we're looking at that right now in terms of looking at, uh, you know, we don't, we don't micromanage the companies, but there's always objectives that we set, uh, that we support, you know, for, uh, for them to ensure that they can offer the best service. Uh, we participate in projects with high risk, you know, but, uh, but we want to make sure that they're well managed. Uh, as we witness as well, you know, there's more and more external competition for the territory, you know, and we want to work with that as well. You know, look, instead of looking at it as a, a negative challenge, we want to look at it as a positive opportunity. And it also relates to high costs of doing business, you know, because interest rates uh, have been rising. Hopefully they cool down now. You know, we've been watching that very closely. Markets have been uh, performing quite well. And, you know, in general, there's, there's a lot of competition. You know, as populations grow, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's going to be a real need for accommodating new workforces. You know, a number has always been shared with us is that there's going to be 500 youth turning 18 this year. You know, that's a huge workforce to be prepared for in a year or two. <laughs> so imagine the logistics behind that in terms of recruiting, uh, you know, informing different types of partnerships. You know, our friends from Abitsiwan have been very uh, instrumental in terms of helping us in, in achieving our goals in terms of maintaining uh, a high level of uh, Cree employees and trainees. So, uh, you know, forming those types of partnerships has been very uh, key for us as well. Uh, I've mentioned working with our partners, uh, but training our employees has always been... Uh, uh, a challenging factor. You know, not every youth uh, is going to go through college or university, so we want to make sure that we can build new career paths for, for these youth that don't go to uh, post-secondary. So we have an internship program that we're working on. Uh, we've we've uh, put it as, a, we, we used it as a pilot project for our real estate project where we hired two Cree engineering students and, uh, you know, they really enjoyed the, uh, the hands-on experience that they gained through that internship program, but we're looking at expanding this, this program through the other companies as well. Um, the other part is the, the partnerships and joint ventures that we form with our communities. You know, we're, we're very open to working with the communities for the benefit of, uh, you know, creating that capacity. I think one of the successes was, you know, when you think of Dawich and Weminji, we had partnerships with them that eventually broke off because they had the capacity to take on these these uh, business ventures on their own. So we we're very proud of the fact that you know we were a player uh, as part of that. We don't take credit for it. You know, it was their willingness to take matters into to their own hands and and ensuring that they could uh, you know be successful in in, in the different uh, areas uh, of business that they were interested in. And the other, I guess the last part would be more about being brave, being courageous, and keep learning and adapting. You know, as, as business changes, people change as well. And we always want to be mindful of the fact that, you know, there is uh, more opportunity than challenge. You know, if you have that kind of mindset, I think, you know, you, you'd be able to accomplish so much more than wasting your energy and time and saying, you know, we can't do this, we can't do that. You know, we always believe at Creco that there is so much more to do. Uh, you know, with working with our, our partners, the communities, the people, uh, you know, even within the regions, you know, the Abitibi region, like I mentioned, is, uh, is very key in terms of how and when we want to do business. So we want to make sure that, you know, we can encourage that moving forward. So with that, uh, I want to thank you all for your time this afternoon, and I want to thank the Secretariat again for your kind invitation, and uh, I wish you all a good conference. Thank you very much.